in my book, I argue that we Muslims need to look at Islamic law and culture from a more liberal perspective. And by liberal, I'm not saying we should buy something from the West. I'm saying we should have our own liberalism. In, in, we, should, we should have our own focus on freedom. Because if there's no freedom, if you can't choose to be a Muslim, if you cannot choose to be a pious Muslim, then there's no meaning to be a Muslim, then there's no meaning to be a pious Muslim. You should have the right to choose between going to a mosque and a bar. That should be your choice to go to mosque, and that's why it's valuable. And to fellow Muslims, you should advise. But if you start to punish them for not going to the mosque, or if you start to punish them for doing things that you consider sinful, then actually you're imposing on them something which doesn't actually make them more religious. Mm. Based on that, I argue for a secular state uh, in my book, which will not impose any religiosity on the citizens, but which will respect their religiosity, and which will respect all their religious rights. And that's actually the consensus that we have come in Turkey. And today, the Islamic demand in Turkey is not an Islamic state, but a more liberal democratic state. No one in Turkey wants to impose the hijab. We just want to, the non-hijab imposers to calm down and you know just respect everyone's uh, standards. We uh, another idea is this what I call the freedom to sin, which is again not to condone sin, but if you try to ban people from sinning, you actually make them hypocrites, not genuine leaders, genuine believers. And the third idea that I say in my book, the last chapter titled uh, Freedom from Islam is the right to apostasy. Now let's, but let's look at what the Quran uh, views. How does the Quran view this, this, uh, this uh, issue, the aspect of individualism? Or how, how, what's its perspective? Well, some people have said that because on the Day of Judgment we'll be having one-to-one -one interviews, so to speak, with uh, God, uh, that we are uh, individuals. But there are, there's, a, there's a few problems with this, because there's all the eyes of Quran which say something a little differently, maybe a different perspective. For example, uh, you, God will bring you up by your leaders, he'll bring you up as nations, and, uh, and he'll uh, count you uh, together with your companions, with, your, with the people that you used to know. Um, you shall bear the sins of other people who you might have influenced by your bad example in society. So even though you didn't do the sin specifically, but because you influenced that person, you bear uh, their sins on your back. Uh, the Quran does detail collective punishments for nations in the hereafter, such as Far'un and other people. Collective punishment, it's a whole nation that was punished. So uh, Islam embraces both the individual and the society, which, which is, makes it different from liberalism and different from communism. We're, we're in between. Now, Sharia and politics, do we have the absolute freedom to sin? I mean, it is argued uh, that to free the individual, like liberalism does, or, or it, it wants to do, I suppose, uh, we must get rid of social compulsion from the state, and that is sufficient to liberate the individual. However, liberalism does not get rid of social uh, compulsion from society. It actually exacerbates it. It, it, by unleashing the actions of unscrupulous, influential people, corporations and groups to cause negative effects against social norms, allowing publicizing of life messages conveying, conveyed through advertising and film, like normalization of violence, casual sex and drugs, uh, which, have, which have become popular, um, reckless fashion uh, advertising, compelling women into unnatural requirements for, for beauty, leading to bulimia, anorexia, plastic surgery, uh, foot hurting high heels, which most women wear, and, uh, and revealing clothes, which, which you know, uh, women feel they, they need to feel uh, you know, to, to part of society, and they, they all start adopting this. And of course, um, other, other dangers such as mass prejudice and fascism uh, by negative propaganda targeting communities, especially re religious ones, under the guise of freedom to criticize religion. The now, Islam has a different view of society. It seeks to liberate human beings from negative social compulsion and alleviate all the obstacles in the way of the fulfillment of human purpose. So that in the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He will command upon them that which is right and forbid them what is wrong, and He will make lawful for them all the good things and prohibit for them all the bad things, and He will relieve from them the burden and the bonds they used to wear. So the actual prohibition of, of bad things and, uh, and advocating the, uh, the good things actually is meant to free us, not repress us. The, 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 the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was described as the mercy to mankind. What mercy he was giving us? Well, telling us Tawheed? Well, we could have gone to Judaism if you wanted um, monotheism. So what mercy did he give us? Well, he gave us a system that could liberate us from hurting each other emotionally, from being obstacles to each other's uh, development, and allowing us to actually realize our human purpose. Islam doesn't tell you, you know, what to believe if you're a Jew or a Christian or whoever, and it doesn't control your life. It allows individuals to make a free choice to sin. 
in the privacy of their own home. You can do what you want. You can drink alcohol, you can take drugs. Uh, Caliph Omar bumped into a guy, well not bumped into a guy, but actually uh, peered over a guy's uh, wall, saw a guy in his own house drinking alcohol and entertaining a lady of uh, disrepute, and didn't punish the guy. In fact, the guy actually rebuked him for daring to peek, peek into his house. So Islam doesn't care about what you do in the privacy of your own home. But it does care of public advertised sins which affect society, which affect social conscience. What the Prophet Muhammad Sallam, used a very great example to express how Islam deals with society. It's a, it's a beautiful example. He says, the example of the person abiding by Allah's order and restrictions in comparison to those who violate them is like the example of people who drew lots uh, for their seats on a ship. Some of them got the upper, upper deck seats and some of them got the lower deck. And when the latter needed water, so when the lower deck needed water, they had to go up to the top to get water from the side. But if they said to themselves, let us not trouble those on top, by, uh, and let us make a hole for our part of the ship to get water directly. If those on top let them do so, they would all be destroyed. But if those on top prevented them from doing so, they would all be saved. And this is, uh, this is in, a, in one beautiful hadith, uh, sums up the, the, the entire Sharia view of society. It's not that Islam doesn't give uh, individuals rights, as I said, well, it's based on Jews, of course. It gives society rights, too. So we're not, like, we're not liberal, and we're not communists. Communists, there's no individuals, they're just society. We're in between. Islam is the, is the balance way, it's always the middle way uh, in, in that respect. So this is quite, something quite beautiful. So Islam has penal laws, the Quran itself has penal laws for society. It's not an accident of history or uh, some person invented a hadith 200 years after the Prophet Muhammad made, and made it up. It's part and parcel of the Quran. So if the Quran has this, then why not have um, other laws which might not be inside the Quran? And there are laws that we follow outside the Quran all the time, like how to pray, which is not mentioned in the Quran at all. Right? So this is something very interesting. And of course, you can't punish a poor person for committing theft. Does the Quran say that? No. The hadith says that. We need to rely on the hadith to actually tell us, to actually rein back the Quran's injunction to not, not punish every person that commits theft, but actually those who fit seven conditions, again, come from, coming from hadith. People use uh, the term, there is no compulsion in deen, to say that uh, an Islamic state cannot compel people uh, with regards to anything that Islam mandates. So if Islam prohibits an interest, it can't stop you because there's no compulsion in deen. But deen means two things. Deen can either mean... Uh, belief or religion, Again, that's the root word, to what you profess, and it can mean uh, to uh, uh, owe allegiance, obey, to condemn or pass judgment. Yomadin, yeah, day of what? Day of religion? Day of belief? No, it's the day of judgment. Deen, same word. So why do we uh, take it out of context? That verse, there's no compulsion of deen, is that you don't force people to be a Muslim, and you don't, you don't force people uh, against their will regarding the issue of belief. However, there's not a verse of Quran which says, and fight them until there is no more oppression, and the deen is for Allah. Now, if we say that the deen means religion here, then that means that we have to compel everybody to, be, uh, to, to have a deen for, for Allah. Otherwise, uh, you know, uh, we, should stop, we shouldn't stop fighting. But what it means is that the judgment is for Allah. So eliminate oppression until the judgment, the laws which, are, which will be fair and just, will be the, uh, you know, the laws which um, Allah has given to, for humanity to free us. Even liberals believe in compulsion. So they, they believe in state law. So there is such a thing as, as uh, state law, which will what? Co coerce you to do the right thing. See, they say that, yeah, humans should decide for themselves. But then why don't you um, be consistent? Like anarchists, they're um, a madhab of liberalism, a school of thought of liberalism. They are very consistent. They say, yep, it, human beings should be left to ourselves to make moral and mature decisions about how we treat each other. But liberals realize many, uh, 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 as from the works of Thomas Hobbes, that that doesn't work. People need the coercion to stop them from hurting each other. So why is there a problem with Islam um, having some, some degree of effect? Now, I'm not saying Islam will force you to be a pious person. Again, you don't have to be. But it prevents you from committing corruption in public that might um, you know, uh, poison society.